Hello everyone, welcome back. So, heading to the polytropics. I know the names are stupid, but I have a lot of fun with them. <laughs> so let's try this problem. So we have argon, ooh, interesting. It's compressed in a polytropic process with n equal to 1.2. It's going from 100 kilopascals and 30 degrees Celsius to 1200 kilopascals in a piston cylinder device. And we want to find the final temperature of argon, okay? Final temperature of argon. We can do this. I'm believing in ourselves. Now, just as a note, the equations I showed you on the last slides, those were all for the boundary work. But a lot of times what we're going to be using instead is um, the, the relationship between pressure and volume that we use to develop the boundary work. You'll need both. So write, make sure you write down all those equations. Okay. Now, for a polytropic process, we know that pressure times volume raised to that exponent is equal to a constant. So it will be the same at the beginning and the end. Um, and so that means if I know my pressure and volume at one, I can probably solve for the pressure and volume at the end. Another thing we can realize is that, okay, I know my ideal gas law, PV equals MRT. You're like, wait a second, that's not how I looked earlier. There's a lot of them. So I can also do PV equals RT. That just makes it into specific volume. So you can do it however you want really here. Um, I'm going to do it this way this time. So we solve for our volume and we could plug that into that equation if we wanted to. So what we can get then is that my pressure times this constant um, is going to be constant. Goodness, I said pressure times the constant is constant. Blah. Pressure times this is going to be equal to a constant. Okay, so I have it at the beginning, I have it at the end. Now, let me look at this right here. We know our temperature initially. We know our pressure initially. We don't know our mass though. Ah, our mass though. How are we going to solve for that? Um, we don't have to worry about it. You know why? Because it's on both sides of the equation. So this cancels out, this cancels out. And so what we're left with is this equation right here. Now, at this very moment, you could, if you wanted to, just go ahead and plug everything in and get numbers. And I strongly suggest that if you're not good at doing like the algebra here, just plug in numbers and then simplify things after that. Because I could have gotten like, you know, some number is equal to some other number, t2 to the n, okay? And I can then solve it pretty easily. I could have already done that, but I like to show you the algebra all the way. I wanted to show you one equation in particular. So when I rearrange it, so I remember that if I have p1 to the first, divided by p1 to the n, that's going to be equal to p1 to the 1 minus n. That's where that comes from. If I put all that together and I rearrange to solve for t2, I get this equation right here. And then for some strange reason, I rearrange it. The reason I rearrange it is because this one is our isentropic process. This one right here is the relationship we're going to get for isentropic processes all the way in chapter seven. And so we're already seeing this now, um, just right now we're calling it a polytropic process because we haven't specifically said that this is the ratio of specific heats yet. Eventually we will. Okay, now if we have this, we have all of our numbers, we plug it in and we will get that the temperature is 458.6 Kelvin. We did it, not too terribly bad. The big things you have to remember are these relationships. We had them for polytropic process. We had them for an isothermal process. We had them for constant volume and constant pressure. If you know those, a lot of times they'll help you figure out your pressures and your volumes. And if it's easy to calculate work, you can do that too with the equations I showed you. Well, that's it for this time. Thank you all so much. Bye-bye.